Hi everyone, uh, this is Matt Touchot with Intro Stats and today I'm going to show you how to um, calculate two population hypothesis tests on um, software. We're going to be using Statcato and StatKey. So this should be pretty interesting. Um, so let's get started. All right, so if you got, you can see in front of me, I got an Excel spreadsheet. Uh, this data came from stat students from uh, College of the Canyons. Uh, College of the Canyons actually has uh, two campuses, the Canyon Country Campus and the Valencia Campus. So like most things in stats, it always, stats always starts with a question, right? What was the question? So my, my question was, do, um, do stat students smoke more or less at Canyon Country or Valencia? So um, is there more smokers, uh, is there a higher percentage of smokers at Canyon Country or is there a higher percentage of smokers at Valencia? So that was kind of my question. So I had this data here, which is uh, what we asked the students what campus they went to and if they smoke cigarettes or not. And um, again, whenever you have raw data like this, I always like to look through it, especially if I'm doing two data sets. I want to see if there's any blanks, any time someone uh, didn't uh, answer one or both the questions, and I usually delete out that row so that I have data that for, from people that actually answered both questions. So um, now, um, let's. So how can I figure this out? I want to figure out sort of how many people smoke from each of the campuses. So one of the first things you want to do if you're dealing with Excel, Excel's great, or you know programs like Excel, uh, what I like to do is use the sort key. Now I don't like to mess up original data, so one of the things that's not good is to mess up original data. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to uh, highlight, um, use hold the control key down and highlight both columns, and then I'm going to control C, copy, and I'm going to put it over here in this next to it, in this data set here. All right, so now what I want to do is sort this. So what I want to do is what we call a custom sort. So if I go to uh, Home on Excel and look under uh, Sort and Filter, which is right here kind of on the side, and, and then I'm going to click Custom Sort. Now, Custom Sort, and it'll tell you, now you have to have both columns highlighted to do a custom sort. Um, so. Uh, also, notice my data does have titles, so my data has headers, so that I left that clicked. Um, and, um, and then I'm going to sort just by campus. So what it's going to do is it's going to put the campus data in order, in alphabetical order. And, uh, but it's going to keep the connection to what the person said about whether they smoke or not. That's what we mean by a custom sort. So I'm going to go ahead and sort by campus. Now what's happened is that, um, that all the Canyon Country people are now together and all the Valencia people are now together. So now I'm going to create some new columns here. So I'm going to have the um, smoking status for Canyon Country. And I'm going to have a, a data set that's going to say smoking status for Valencia. Okay, so let's do that. So all I'm going to do now, I'm going to go ahead and scroll over just a little bit so you can see better. Um, so here's the Canning Country, and this is the people that all said they went to Canning Country and whether or not they smoke. So I'm just highlighting the smoking column that has just Canning Country people next to it. So here's the Canning Country people and whether they smoked or not. So I'm just going to copy the part of the column that has Canyon Country next to it, and I'm going to put that in its own column now. All right, sorting can be a very useful tool uh, when you're trying to figure out a question or figure out data. Now I'm going to do the same thing for Valencia. So the, all these people here has, uh, went to the Valencia campus. Notice that the word Valencia is in the left next to it, and then I asked them if they smoked or cigarettes or not, yes or no, and there we go. So, looks like there's a lot, quite a bit uh, more people that went to Valencia. There we go. And I'm going to go ahead and put them in their own data set. Okay. 
So now if I want to, um, probably some easy ways to do is you could put this data into a software program pretty easily and get, get these counts, but I wanted to show you a little bit about Excel as well as um, the software. So from here what I could do is um, if I wanted to count uh, how many people said they smoke in and what was my total one thing I could do is go kind of go down highlight this highlight this data and I can see here that um, it ended in row 109 but the top row was a title so there's really 108 also if I go down at the bottom you'll see this little word count count and a count next to it says 108 whatever you highlight uh, the Excel program actually will count it for you as well so I know I got a total of 108 and I know that um, so a total of 108 now the question is how many smoked right how many smoked um, probably an easy way to do that we, we could just sort this one column of data so if I just highlight Again, that one column of data. Now, we don't really need to custom sort here. I just want to sort this one data set. So I'm going to go again to my sort and filter button. But this time, I'm just going to say sort A to Z. Now, the computer's going to ask me whether I want to expand that sorting to other columns, but I don't. So I'm just going to click continue with current selection and then push sort. And there we go. So I got all the no's and the yeses now in alphabetical order. And I can see the four yeses at the bottom. <laughs> so there's really only four people out of 108 that said that they smoke cigarettes at the Canning Country Campus. So this was stat students at the Canning Country Campus. Now let's do the same thing for the Valencia. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight these. So I can highlight the Valencia Campus smoking question. All right, and I'm going to sort that. So I'm going to go sort, sort A to Z. I'm not actually uh, do a custom sort. I'm just doing a sort A to Z. Again, they want to know if I want to expand the selection. I don't. I just want to sort that one column that I highlighted. So now they're in alphabetical order. I can see because I highlighted them all, the count meter down here says there's a total of 218. I could also have seen right here that this last yes there ends at row 219 but the first title first column was a title so this would actually be 218 would be my total so I know my total was 218 and I know that my number of yeses so how many how many people smoke so again if I just highlight all the yeses my count meter down at the bottom says 26 so I have I have 26 smokers. I always like to write myself little notes about, especially categorical data, it's all about the counts and the totals. So just write yourself little notes. All right, so now let's go ahead and move into some software here and just kind of get, get a little bit of an idea of what we're dealing with. So here's, here's Stat, uh, Stat Cato. I uh, went ahead and typed in Valencia had 26 smokers and, and out of 218 and Canning Country had 4 out of 108. Again, I also actually divided them and calculated a sample proportion. I can see actually that the sample proportion for Valencia was about 11.9% and for Canning Country it was only 3.7%. And to me it almost looks different, but again, we may want to check, maybe do a hypothesis test to see if this Valencia, the smoking, the percentage of smokers at Valencia really is significantly higher than the percentage of smokers at Canning Country. Remember, this is sample data, and if we try to say something about the population, then um, again, that's where the hypothesis test comes in. So, um, by the way, I, I also have the raw data down here. And if you didn't know these counts and you didn't want to do the sort thing in, in Excel, you could do a simple pie chart would work really well. So if I just went here and did graph and pie chart, and usually you do uh, data values from worksheet, and C2 would be Valencia, if I push OK, I can see I got 26 people that smoke and 192 that do not smoke. Now I did, it doesn't tell me actually the total, but I could figure that out, that it was 218 if I add these two numbers together. 
Uh, I could also make a graph of uh, a pie chart of the Canyon Country data, which was column one. And I can see four people smoke out of, and 104 did not, so that would be a total of 108. So pie charts are also a nice way, easy way to sort of, um, especially with Stat Cato, to um, get some counts on your categorical data. Now, here's the question. I want to know if the population percentage, not sample percentage, I can see the sample percentage for Valencia is higher than Canyon Country, but what I want to know is, is it, is the populations, is this indicating that the population really is higher? So let's find out. So I've got to remember these counts. Now I'm going to go to, again, it's always good to write, think about your null and alternative hypothesis. So my null hypothesis would be that they're equal. And my alternative hypothesis would be that Valence, the percentage of smokers at, uh, the percentage of stat students that smoke at the Valencia campus is higher than at Canyon Country. Okay, so I'm going to do a greater than test, so which would be a right-tailed test. All right, so let's do that. So I go to statistics, hypothesis test, two population proportion. There it is, two population proportion. And again, I, you, have, you can have some options if you have the raw data, it can do that. I'm going to go ahead and use my summary counts, which is more common, especially with quanti uh, categorical data. So remember, I had to be very clear. Remember, I just said in, uh, I, I'm trying to test if Valencia is higher than Canyon Country. So I have to do Valencia as Group 1 and Canyon Country as Group 2. So Valencia's count, again, a number of events is the number of successes. Number of trials is the total. So 26 out of 218. And then population 2 is Canyon Country, and we said 4 uh, smoke out of a total of 108. So I'm going to go ahead and put those in. Okay, looks good. Um, now, right down here, um, it says the null and alternative hypothesis, and what significance level do you want to use? 5% is the usual, but you could do a different one. I'm going to go ahead and leave it at 5%. Um, alternative hypothesis. Uh, I'm going to do greater than. Some computer programs you'll see actually the symbol for greater than. Remember the symbol points to the right. But this uh, Staccato likes to use words, so I'll just say greater than. Now look right here, hypothesized proportion difference. We kind of talked about that in our LACSH, uh, our